just to start off, because I think to look at the implications for Ireland, which is what we're doing here today, uh, it's also necessary to look at you know, why did the UK finally decide to resolve its difficulties with the European Union by deciding to leave? And I think if you go back, uh, an important point is that the UK always had a preference for a free trade area and a free trade relationship, rather than the single market, the customs union that has common policies on trade, some harmonization of economic and social policies, common policies on the environment. And this was in order to retain more sovereignty because you've uh, you pool less sovereignty in a free trade area than you do in a customs unions, also due to the Commonwealth issue at the time. But that was the first veto that the Gaul exercised was actually in 1958, in November 1958, when he refused that free trade relationship uh, to the U United Kingdom, and they eventually had to decide to join. Margaret Thatcher then, in her Bruges speech in 1988, when she set herself apart on the social dimension uh, of Europe, lit the torch for Euroscepticism. Cameron called the reason the referendum for internal reasons to white flank UKIP, but I also think it's important to note that William Hague said in October 2011, before Cameron made that decision, that when the opportunity arose, the UK, the UK would take that opportunity to reset its relationship with Europe. That hankering for the free trade relationship, they thought the Eastern European states might be willing to go that, down that road. That hankering for that free trade relationship was always there. Coincidentally, in 1988 also, the law persuaded the labour movement at the TUC to back social Europe and that that was in their best interest. But in my experience in meeting British trade unionists around Europe over many, many years, I don't think it was ever a full-blooded conversion on the part uh, of the labour movement. Calling a referendum then, where he set out a call for fundamental reform of the European Union, adding immigration later, which is what he did uh, because of UKIP, getting only, let's face it, modest concessions in the negotiation. It just created, in my view, a perfect storm. In 1975, when Wilson held the referendum, the economy was all that it was about. The UK was a sick man in Europe. Now, UK has virtually full employment. The Eurozone is where the problems are. Uh, the Eurozone is weaker. So it allowed emigration to take center stage. Having said that, the Leave campaign, in my view, extraordinarily got away with telling voters they could get a good deal simply because the UK has a trade deficit with the European Union. Now, to look at border controls, both customs and passport, which Tom has asked me to do, it is related to what type of trade agreement the UK is going to be able to negotiate uh, with the European Union. From Ireland's point of view, we would want them to have full access to the single market, more than Norway and Switzerland, because Norway and Switzerland do not have access for agriculture and fisheries. Uh, from Ireland's perspective, that's one of our key interests, so we would want them uh, to have full access. But the difficulty is, one of the key reasons the UK voted to leave was due to emigration. We, this, that's clear from the polls, or from the decision uh, last night. And if you're part of the single market, you've got to accept uh, immigration. But let's say they did decide to be part of the single market, even temporarily, while they were negotiating their other uh, free trade agreements with third countries. Would they want to include agriculture? I think we could persuade the European Union to include agriculture uh, in a single market negotiations, but would the UK agree to that? They may in the short term, because if they didn't, they would have to impose, uh, the EU, EU would have tariffs imposed on agriculture uh, exports from the UK into the EU. The UK would have to impose similar tariffs that would in increase food prices in the short term. But if they didn't impose corresponding tariffs, they'd also have to give them to every third country on a uh, WTO most favoured nation status. So it's possible in the short term uh, agreement on free trade. But in the longer term, as Britain can negotiate, and the one thing about being outside the EU but in the single market is you can negotiate trade deals with third countries. In the longer term, Britain may revert to a, uh, a cheap food policy by uh, negotiating free trade with Mercosur, and that has implications then in terms of uh, Brazilian beef being able to access the, uh, uh, the Irish market through the UK uh, back door. My own assessment is that I can't see the European Union, even though it would be in our interest, uh, to give the UK a good free trade deal without accepting all the rules. We might want it from our point of view, and that's one of the jobs we have to do in the national interest, but the other member states are going to see that putting their own economies at a competitive disadvantage by giving the UK full access without the UK having to follow all the rules. Uh, so I, I, I think it unlikely. 
so in that scenario, we might have to think in terms of special transitional measures while we adjust to the fact that we've got to find new markets in the wider uh, single market. Now, whatever happens, if the UK leaves the European Union, which it has decided to do, but stays in the single market, you still have customs procedures because it can negotiate trade agreements with third countries. So you need rules of origin procedures to ensure that those third countries that the UK is negotiating with can't bypass the common external tariff that the EU has. So that's where rule of origin procedures arise. You then have customs posts and customs procedures on the land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. That is uh, unavoidable. There will be customs posts and customs procedures. How intrusive and extensive, we don't know. It will depend on the amount of revenue risk, first of all. VAT is payable as, uh, as uh, a third country, uh, sorry, as, as the UK, even within the single market, with exporting into uh, the European Union. VAT is payable at the point of entry. Uh, tariff would be payable for those areas that it doesn't have free trade in, perhaps uh, a a a agriculture, but the rules of origin procedure are the main important thing in terms of uh, customs procedures. If the UK has a deal with Mercosur, the Irish Farmers Association will insist that customs controls are very stringent to ensure that Brazilian beef does not access the Republic of Ireland market, bypassing the common external tariff, which are it's up to 70% with beef, 36% with, with dairy. So customs controls are an inevitable consequence. Passport controls depend on whether you have free movement or not. If the UK does stay in the single market and you have free movement, well, passport controls don't arise. They will arise if the UK uh, leaves the single market, uh, doesn't have agreement in relation to free movement. So we may still retain free movement rights between Ireland and the UK. There's no reason why that should stop. Uh, but the UK will not give free movement rights to Polish, Latvian, uh, Eastern Europeans. And the only way to ensure that they cannot get into the UK uh, by using Ireland at the back door is by having passport controls to monitor and check that situation. Where will the passport controls be? Well, we have a precedent. The last time that the UK introduced passport controls uh, when France fell in May 1940, they put passport controls not on the land border, but between Belfast and Liverpool and Belfast and what's now Cairn Ryan, or if you were flying to London, they didn't put them on the land border because they took the view that you couldn't police the land border uh, effectively. Uh, Cameron has already indicated that that would be the solution uh, preferred on this time around. I did a delayed debate last night and Jeffrey Donald Donaldson uh, was on and I spoke to him about this and he was quite uh, candid that if they had to have passport controls, so be it. It was more important from the Union's point of view to be out of the European Union and be able to do their own free trade deals. And if they had that passport controls between Belfast and Liverpool, well, that wasn't a big concern. I suspect it might be if, when it actually happens, but that was the, the attitude uh, he took last night. So just finally, just to, to end up on uh, one, one small final point, because I think the UK is an exceptional situation, and I don't think it necessarily follows that it's going to lead to a rise of Euroscepticism all over Europe. Having said that, we know there is an issue, we know there's a problem, we know citizens have lost some faith, uh, in the European uh, project. I was in uh, at a meeting of the European Social Fund last week under the Dutch presidency, and the Commission made a very important presentation on a pillar of social rights. Uh, I gave the trade, uh, the trade union response to the Commission's presentation, uh, and it's linked to the next phase of economic and monetary union deepening uh, for a deeper and fairer uh, economic and monetary union. Uh, it's important to have a pillar of social rights. My own experience is it's always been social progress going in tandem with economic progress like in the single market. Uh, and I think it, there's a danger now with the UK having left that the EU will pause and you know, be afraid to go further in terms of further integration. But I actually think that would be the wrong response. I think the social pillar uh, is a very, very important uh, uh, agenda in terms of persuading citizens to have a restored faith in the European Union. Uh, I'm quite confident that uh, if the uh, Commission and the Member States go down that road, uh, that you know, faith in Europe can be restored, and I think it's necessary uh, to set the British decision now uh, aside, but uh, Pat Cox will know more than I do about this, whether that's actually going to happen or not, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you very much.